Well, good afternoon for all. Uh, I'm Gilberto, and I run a, a data laboratory in a favela in, in, in Rio. And I'm staying here just to, to mediate this, this debate with my friends. So we are here for the, this maker education discussion panel. The main idea here is understand the maker movement and its insertion on formal education. The hacker culture, as you know, comes at uh, 60s in the counterculture with the idea of do everything possible by yourselves. Uh, in the past years, we saw a lot of alternative space like makerspace, hackerspace, hacker clubs around the globe. These groups of makers start a new way to teach making and making technology. Nowadays, these ideas are growing inside the schools and also in formal learning centers. To discuss it, we have here three people on the stage. Gabriela is founder of and executive director of Olabi Makerspace in Rio. Rodrigo Pitanga is a, ma a makerspace manager at Eleva School. And Miguel Chaves from Navia Vela. I would like first to invite Rodrigo um, to talk how schools are connecting to this and how open them are for, for a, a new culture, new open culture and new methodologies. After, Gabi can talk and then Miguel, okay? So let's do it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's go. We have to go back to the first slide. Sorry. Okay. All right, Murphy's Law. Okay, so um, I'm going to talk about educational makerspaces, which are um, makerspaces that are being set up in schools, not only in Brazil, but uh, that's a trend around the world. And Less. No? Okay, I'll, I'll just stay here. All right, so um, educational makerspaces, which are uh, like a new trend, not only in Brazil, but in other countries. Uh, and like just for, for starters, actually, I would like to know, like, please raise your hand if you know what a makerspace or what a hackerspace is. Right, fine. So it looks like, um, so like, this is not really like a new trend. So like since the 80s, uh, creation-focused communities have been organizing around community-operated spaces. Uh, and that's been uh, all around the world. So um, like back with the Chaos, Com uh, Chaos Computer Club here in Germany in the 80s, uh, this is a picture of Seabase that was started in 1995 in Berlin, not far from here. In the middle, we have New York City Resistor, which is a makerspace in New York. And the last one is Garoa Hacker Club in Brazil, which I helped found at the beginning of this decade. Um, and one of the reasons that those spaces were created, apart from having a space where you can socialize, where you can, where you can share tools with your friends and materials and work on projects, was that most of us were frustrated with the traditional approaches to education. We were frustrated with that uh, classroom with like lined up chairs and only the teacher talking. So, um, so those spaces were like naturally uh, organized around this community sense, like this community learning processes. So what, what's happening now is that schools are getting more and more interested about this uh, hacker way of teaching and like hacker way of learning together. Um, and that's now as we started like a few years ago, we had like makerspaces as an alternative to schools in terms of learning environments. And at this moment, the schools are bringing the makerspaces inside. And I like to say like 
they're, they're bringing the people back in, like the people that were frustrated in the past with uh, the educational system, they are now like running those, those maker spaces in schools. So we have maker spaces as school spaces, just like because we have a library or a computer lab, we have a maker space. So this, um, I, I'm going to show like a little bit of my work at Scala Leva. So Scala Leva started last year in, in Rio de Janeiro as a day, uh, day school, bilingual school. Uh, and the school was, started, was founded last year. So the makerspace starts with the school. The makerspace starts as a constituent part of the school. Uh, so this is uh, what our laboratory looked like before the students came in. So like a bunch of machines, um, CNC mill, uh, 3D printer, uh, cutting plotter, a bunch of computers, a studio is super nice, but um, the way we see it is that the most important aspect of a makerspace in a school, and well, a makerspace or a hackerspace everywhere, is the learning community that, uh, that flourishes around it. Uh, so this, uh, this is the first time my students were, were using uh, a 3D printer. Um, so technology is ubiquitous in a makerspace, but it's not strictly necessary. So we can have activities using, well, the most technological tool here, except from the desktop in the background, is a hot glue gun. Um, so the way we, we do this in schools, like I, I, like, to, um, I like to say that, uh, like, where the makerspace comes in this spectrum of, like, so this is, um, like, a teacher and the student's participation in an activity. So towards the top, um, you can find most like teacher-centered or like traditional approaches where the teachers um, they have like the most most time participating in a lesson, uh, and this is where like at least the school that I work for and many uh, student-centered so-called student-centered uh, schools today they are. Uh, so this is where the core curriculum resides and. At Scuola Leva, we implemented, with the help of Miguel, which I'm going to talk about this later, we implemented a makerspace curriculum that pushes this, um, this culture shift from a teacher-centered paradigm into a student-centered paradigm. So it pushes that shift even forward. So here's the main makerspace curriculum that is taught for students uh, during their like, regular school day. So they have math, science, um, literature, um, library time, makerspace time. And that time we have like both more like guided and independent activities. Uh, and apart from that, we also have student-led clubs and extracurriculars and even study period and free time where the students can just like pop in the makerspace and work on their own projects or work on projects for science, math, whatever um, they can use the space with. Um, so after almost one, well, after one year, uh, we're going into our second year now, uh, we found that uh, just like the fact that we have a makerspace in the school boosted the kids' uh, confidence in solving their, uh, solving problems by themselves and learning through that solving. Um, also, we created a culture of reappropriation of the tech, of the technology. Uh, so what used to be just like a big box of electronic junk that parents would uh, pump into the school every, every, every time that we asked for, uh, it actually became a laboratory where students can um, scavenge equipment. So like from this they created a scavenging club, they created uh, a circuit banding club and they even, um, they're even learning how to fix devices that break um, after some time of use, they, uh, I, I think I missed this picture, but they even fixed um, a sewing machine that cost like um, 200 euro and uh, after fixing it, like they want to charge us like the double to fix it. So, uh, well, in the end, I think the most important is the sense of uh, community that the space brings. Uh, so students can participate actively in uh, younger students teaching and for last, like the unified learn associated with this space is that uh, this, so this was an assessment in which I asked students to uh, record a video and hey please record a video and tell me what you learned in my class. They told about everything except for my class and like how do I evaluate those students like oh we learned how to make a planetary using a laser cutter, we learned how to make a mold for a science project and well, some of them didn't tell like anything at all about my regular time. And well, that's the best evidence of learning that you can have. 
Uh, well, I think I'll just uh, keep it short. Of course, there's much more to talk about. And well, this is, uh, we'll put this back later, my email if you want to contact me. But now I'm going to hang, hang, hand over to Gabi. Let's see if it's working, this one. Oh. Yeah, it's not working, isn't it? Okay. So, hi everyone, my name is Gabriela. I'm also based in Rio, close to Rodrigo and Gilberto. And I'm running this organization that is a social organization called Dolabi. And we started four years ago in 2014 with this challenge to stimulate the culture of diversity in innovation in tech. So basically, we started as a makerspace, but not in a traditional sense. So we didn't start with machines and equipment and all like this idea that we should like uh, use all these facilities. Uh, we start as a blank space and we start to invite people to understand which kind of space we could design in the place that we had. Uh, we start to host events and try to connect and build in community. And after a while, we start to find and receive and gain and even buy some machines and some equipment, electronics and 3D printers and um, laser cutters and whatever because we need it for some activities. So I'm just explaining this beginning because that made such a difference in our history and we know that there are a lot of, um, there are a lot of things that we can do with machines and facilities and it's always amazing to have access to equipment, especially when you come from a reality like us in Brazil that is not that easy to find it, all these like high level machines and all this fab lab model and everything. But we really believe that to make something useful and mean, meaningful with all these machines and equipment, we need first the mindset, the community, the problems. So for us, Makerspace is much more about the mindset. It's about a new way to look for the problems to the society and the things and try to learn by doing and connecting with the problems that we have in society, try to understand what exactly we can do with all these equipment and all this technology that is available nowadays. So what we've been working on is try to understand that technology is much more about questions that we want to make and less about the products and results and the things that we definitely can make it. Not because we don't think it's important all these uh, equipment and the, pro the final products, of course, as a makerspace we are like supporting, mentoring and doing a lot of tech stuff. But we really believe that it's important to think and talk about the problems and the challenges of the society and connect with like the social organization, the social movements, the government and all the institutions and layers that, we, that we has been thinking and doing a lot for like trying to solve changes and make a better environment, a better city, or whatever you think that can be better. So this is why we've been doing, and then we've been designing educational programs for museums, universities, um, research departments of like different kinds of institutions, social organizations especially, and also we have like our own space where we do a lot of stuff like hosting meetings, helping other organizations to understand this kind of new contest where people are more close to equipment and are more close to the idea that they can produce technology and they are not just consumers. And we also have a layer, a really important layer of some activism where we are work especially with diversity, with gender and race and other layers that we think is super important because Technology is not neutral, we know that. And the past 10 years especially show us how uh, bias and how the way that we look to the world is embedded in all the products and all the things that we are making. So if we don't open access to people in different contexts, in different places, in different cultures, and with different mindsets, uh, we will end up with even a more unequal society. So this is why we've been trying to do, we have this project 
project called Preta Lab, which is a network of black women in Brazil around technology and innovation. And we've been trying to put this, to push this idea that we should like have more black women in tech as we don't have that much in any place in the world, and especially uh, in countries like Brazil, that technology is super uh, something our is still elitist and accessible just for a few people. So we also have been trying to help some local organizations in favelas and some specific communities to understand how they can use these equipment like carpentry tools, digital fabrication tools to connect with the work that they already uh, has doing in some areas like this is like a cooperative uh, with like sewing and some girls that used to work more in the crafts and then we came with machines and digital fabrication and they, they could learn a lot about this and they could like have more uh, ac access to different kinds of things that they could make products from that and that was like super interesting for them to bring like new revenues and bring new ideas and a new way to express themselves um, and a, of course that we really believe in the local and try to push in our space in our area but at the same time we think the global connection is super important so we are part of the fab lab network and we, we are also part of this global innovation network that is running this maker space in the back of republica and uh, global innovation gathering started here in republica as a track of content six years ago and it becomes an association it's a organization that connects people like us that is like hosting and running spaces around tech especially in the global south so there are people from iraq philippines uh, malaysia brazil colombia togo a lot of different countries in the world and we've been together trying to push this idea that we should bring more diversity and different perspectives because then we can see what difference it can make in the world so it was supposed to be black. I don't know what's happening when I change it, so sorry. But that is just like Olabi Maker Space. You can find on Instagram, on Facebook, and some social networks. Um, we've been working for four years, and all this time we attended 20,000 people. Um, and we are like coordinating two spaces and also doing some consultants and some educational programs. Uh, we've been like in more than 20 countries for the past two or three years trying to help people to understand makerspace more a space that we can change this this cultural approach to connect problems and solve things and connect the humanities and arts and all the things that we had in the society with these new facilities much more as a space of community building and much more as a space that you can try to definitely solve problems and make something better for the future. So now I'm going to pass to my colleague Miguel. So, uh, my name is Miguel. Uh, I will introduce my, my part in this lecture uh, with this video. So, I was here in 2015 doing a stage two, and I was presenting exactly this video. This is a makerspace inside of Favela in Sao Paulo, and we got the mission four, four years ago to build that makerspace. And so, this guy, his name is William, and he's telling how he could build some camera using cardboard. The interesting thing about this space that we have today, the name of, which the name is Centro de, uh, Innovation Center, Vila Nova Esperança, when we got the mission to build this innovation center, we also got the mission from our donor how to make this innovation center sustainable for the future. Because they were going to give around just four years budget for us to keep this space happening. Right? So I just brought this video so I can introduce a little bit about this space. And the interesting thing that when we start to think, to make some ideas, how could you make the innovation center sustainability for the future, we came an idea that maybe you could give social innovation class for people around the favelas and focus in high schools. So we start to make that. So in 2016, 
we got to the uh, inno uh, innovation, social innovation class. And the interesting thing that that has become bigger just because of this center, right? And I'm going to show you the second part of the story. Live like this. So when we start to think about that, in the first moment, we create kind of a business model for that space that I showed you before, just teach as an after school in the class in Brazil, uh, the social innovation classes and also tech startup classes. All these classes around technology and design thinking and all that stuff that happens with entrepreneurship and also with innovation. But we start to realize that when you teach as after school or extracurricular, not everyone had access to that knowledge. So why not to do that mandatory besides math, besides science in the curriculum of the school? So we create Navia Vela, that's kind of a curriculum of innovation that engages students inside of the school, from the elementary school, middle school, to high school, how to, how to get a mindset of innovation. I'm going to show you a video really quickly, and after I can explain how you do that. Tem, existem muitas inovações na educação, desde softwares de gestão, espaços diferentes, técnicas pedagógicas, enfim. Só que existe também uma educação para a inovação. A gente está reescrevendo o currículo da escola é, e dentro dessa reescritura de currículo a gente tem muito forte um currículo maker também. Não é só a língua portuguesa, é matemática. Quando ele entra nesse espaço ele sabe que é, tem regras mas que ele pode criar. Então ele aprende a fazer, ele aprende a analisar e saber se está bom, se não está bom. Além de sair um pouco da nossa rotina escolar, a gente faz coisa que a gente gosta, que, tipo, que a gente sabe que é um projeto legal e que pode ajudar alguém ou resolver algum problema real. Esse tipo de atividades makers dentro das escolas, na verdade, vem da confluência de dois grandes movimentos da atualidade. É, um deles é olhando para a forma como a gente lida com tecnologia. Então a gente pode entender que os alunos já estão imersos no ambiente tecnológico da cabeça aos pés, né, no seu dia a dia. É, só que o um grande problema disso é que muitas vezes, a sua maioria das vezes, no papel de consumidores de tecnologia. A gente vem sempre tentando mostrar a tecnologia de um modo aberto, né, ela, ela do avesso. Né? Aí quando surge essa onda maker, pra gente ela juntou a fome com a vontade de comer. E o outro grande movimento é o movimento de repensar a escola, ou essa escola para o século XXI que a gente quer, é como uma escola de formação também para a vida, né? onde mais importante do que os conteúdos sabidos é o que você faz com o conteúdo, é como você o articula. Eu acho que é um processo forte do aluno saber o que ele está fazendo e para que caminho ele está indo, ele dominar o, o próprio aprendizado. Quando ela chega com alguma coisa do maker, ela chega com uma novidade, ela chega com algo que empodera ela, com algo que faz sentido, porque ela viveu a experiência de fazer aquilo. Então, na Vela, na verdade, é uma grande ponte né, para a aprendizagem criativa, ao pensar os conteúdos curriculares e esse desenvolvimento socioemocional uh, a partir de atividades mão na massa, a partir de atividades de criação. A entrada de vocês é, ajudou a gente a, a organizar a, a metodologicamente aquilo que a gente já estava ensaiando de fazer. É um aprendizado professor também, porque a gente sai desse lance de detentor do conhecimento. A gente não só tem que dividir, como compartilhar e também ser aprendiz dos alunos. É comum eu estar aqui os professores entrarem e perguntarem se dá para fazer tal coisa ou como eles poderiam resolver tal problema. Então eles vêm às vezes perguntar para a gente assim, ah, estou pensando em dar um trabalho de geografia que eles vão mexer com relevo. Você acha que se os alunos vierem aqui na hora livre eles conseguem fazer uma maquete? E tem sido uma experiência interessante, porque os alunos querem muito ocupar o espaço, todo mundo quer estar aqui ao mesmo tempo. E aí a gente tem projetos de todos os tipos acontecendo. Cada grupo está criando um projeto próprio, tipo, tem um que é para parar o barulho do recreio, um para problema de água, um para problema de lixo, e cada um está desenvolvendo um projeto para melhorar esses problemas que tem na Me escola. Senta. Não é a cultura maker porque está na moda, não é a cultura maker porque é uma imposição, é uma cultura maker porque é uma possibilidade de reescritura. So, and why it's mandatory? Why for us it's good to put in the curriculum? Because we see the technology, we see the movement, the maker movement, 
not as the end of a story, but as the middle of something beyond. And this something beyond we call social emotional learnings. So we know that soft skills has been like in another discussion in the entire world, and Brazil has discussed a lot the social emotional learning in the university uh, and the schools. And because of this, we create this curriculum that we call Cultura, de Innova Cultura of Innovation. I'm gonna say sorry because it's Portuguese, but I can explain everything that's here, okay? So that's the social emotional learning that we teach through maker movement. So they are kind of three technicals one and three, tech, three soft ones. The first one is empowerment in technology. So it's really important we we'll teach our kids that, uh, how to get empowerment technology because the tools today, we don't know you're gonna exist in 40, in 40 years or in 50 years. And our students are gonna live in the future, not now. The second one is resolu uh, creat think creativity in problems. So how can I think differently uh, in something and when I'm gonna fix an idea or a problem? The third one is how to do projects. So how can I get a, a piece of paper that's blank yet and make that exist in the real world? So, I, so there's all these technical uh, skills that we will learn and there's three skills that are more soft. We call empathy, collaboration, and autonomy. So that most of the time they are building projects that they need to build every 15 days. They are building together with someone. They are trying to understand how they can face their own feelings and stuff like that. But the interesting thing, for which one of these we may researching and understanding the entire world, we created other skills that go directly to the curriculum, right? So we call these, uh, skills, we call these abilities, and after the abilities, we'll have learnings. Around, today we have around 100 learnings that connect directly with the curriculum inside of the school, right? So, this is some, some of our classes. For example, here, this class, he's gonna, he's gonna learn how to use a tool that's the hammer. So, but how I, you're gonna use the hammer. It's interesting because the most of time, I also give classes. The most of time that I got the uh, students in the first year of high school, and I give a hammer, and I give a screw, and I give a nail, he start to re hit the screw with the, with the hammer. That's normal, really, because this most of time, we don't, we don't have our students with the real world. We have like any other kind of education. So, so here we have the classes, and also here we have the learnings that go directly with the skills that we want to teach. So for these, we have classes for the, all the basic, so elementary school, middle school, and high school that go through in this course. So the interesting thing, just to finish my presentation, um, yeah, so today we are, we are in 25 schools in Brazil, around more than 6,000 students have go, has passed through on this curriculum, and yeah, so I think it's this. Thanks so much. Nice. We, well, thank you all. We have here, I have here three questions just to, to make this kind of a discussion and conversation. I think we talk about all you, you said and then we could open to you. But I have one, one here first. Well, all this experience that we hear is from Brazil, but we know it's a global movement. Like Gabi said, we are from a global innovation gathering, which brings a lot of innovations from the global south to Republic every year. And we could see initiatives close to this in, in Kenya, in Ghana, in Colombia, in Indonesia, in Nepal. And Gabi, I just want you to, to think in the main contribution of Brazil to this global scene? Like, is there something unique happens in the fields in Brazil that brings some learnings for us or for, or for the global uh, discussion, do you think? Hi, uh, I think that is a great question as we are all from the same country. So it's like, we, we've been discussing about that. Like, what is exactly is our contribution when we come from a country that has one specific culture like everyone in the world? And one thing that we've been like understanding is Brazil has like a super collaborative culture and also a kind of improvising culture. So we are, it's kind of easy for our mindsets to be in touch with others' mentality and share knowledge and build stuff together. 
Um, so that makes it easier for us to make this kind of community approach, learn by doing approach, and put people that it's not that uh, similar together to do something um, in like in a group or something like that. So I think definitely. Uh, this success of maker movement in Brazil is because our culture is like close to this kind of mindset. And I think the contribution that we could give is like, I think it's like we could spend the whole afternoon thinking about this and it's not like uh, closed answers because I, I don't know exactly we could like research more, but I think definitely it's about put different people together, you know? Uh, sometimes when I'm like traveling in different events around maker movement, in, especially in the north, uh, usually it's not that easy to find that diversity in a room because basically people has different mindsets and it's not that easy to put people to connect. And I think that is something that is coming, it's, it's kind of, it's, I'm not, I would not say easy, but it's something that we do quite a lot in Brazil and the carnival and a lot of things that is, is super part of our culture is about like putting different movements together and put people that comes from different backgrounds in the streets together, the poor and the rich and we are coming from a super unequal reality so it's not that easy and but it's happening and it happens in different fields of the society so definitely it's something that we can contribute and trying to bring to this maker the maker movement this idea that we should be more open to different fields and connect with science connect with arts and connect with other fields nice look we can say the maker culture was born from from some frustration of the system like he, like rodrigo says and they propose an alternative model of learning, yes? Now you are saying it's possible to back to this closer space and transform the structures from inside. Maybe the schools, and I mean the, the traditional schools, are not prepared for that. It seems a challenge adapted these more open models for the school space. And how you have been working this methodology intersection, and I want just Rodrigo talk a little bit about that. Of course, he's working on this 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 kind of open school, more uh, more open to this. But we need to think about a methodology to make this, you know, this match. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, like this is tricky, right? When you go back into the system and try to change it from the inside, you are um, you are risking like being swallowed by it so um schools are schools are a complicated environment like there are many um things at stake so for instance i've seen uh like many school school administrators um visiting the space that i manage and asking me hey please can you give me your list of equipment your list of materials yeah i just need that and to the contrary right uh so we really have to pay attention uh, and ask about what we're doing and like are we just are we just setting up a nice space that people will take pictures at and like to be honest many school school administrators they are uh well maybe they, they don't know about other potentials that a makerspace has inside a school and they're looking for it because i mean oh that's trendy that will bring more students and like that will get the family's attentions. So um, I think, yes, I think the, the maker spaces, they can, uh, they can even like, we can even envision a moment when we will go like one step further and every school space will look like a maker space. So like um, the school I'm, uh, I'm working at now, we have now three maker spaces and we're thinking about how can we make the bio lab or how can we make the arts room more open to students in the sense that they can spend more time here, spend more extra class here um, and work on projects that actually matter to them. Um, so in that sense, uh, like it's not here anymore, but like I'd like to recall that pyramid uh, diagram. So like we are always like, I think that the maker spaces, they can be a driving force uh, in schools to push even further into a more student-centered approach. And that's, that's what I believe in pedagogical terms. So when you ask, well, is this is, is a makerspace for a traditional school? I'm, I'm, like, I'm not sure. Like, if you're in a school that 
believes in a more traditional um, educational approach, and I mean, that's legitimate, even if I don't agree with that, uh, maybe a makerspace is not for that school. Maybe in that school, the makerspace would just be uh, like a place where people will go and take pictures and you have like nice equipment and you just need a list of, of equipment that you have to buy. Um, so, well, this is something we, we need to have in mind. But if you, are one, if you want to do something that's going to change education for good, um, I think makerspaces can help. The, they're not going to do this alone, but they, are a major, um, a, they have a major role in that process. Nice. <clears throat> well, sometimes this experience seems like idiosyncratic, like, oh, you get it because of some specific thing, so this happened in a specific context, but your work guides us for another way, more paradigmatic, more, <clears throat> more scalable, mayor, with the, the, the power of the intervention in curriculums and uh, also in the structure of education. So, Miguel, could you talk about this challenge of, of scale the work, like uh, in, uh, uh, enhance the, the, the curriculums, the traditional curriculums making this, this kind of work? Yeah, that's pretty interesting. It has been a lot of learning. Uh, as Rodrigo said, sometimes the, the, the maker space it needs to be to find a, a function, an objective, a goal inside of the schools. And in these few years, we realized that not a lot, of, not the most of the schools that had the sense of how to restart that. So we kind of create this process to get a scale. So it's kind of so some some stages, some some uh, some areas how you can start how to make a maker space inside of your school. But you also say that we are not all like restricted. We can be flexible and we can adapt for the philosophy of the school. The interesting thing that every time that we're going to implement this school, we have four phases. They are not side by side, but they can happen in parallel. The first one, we always present a little better what maker movement to the schools. A lot of times they buy because it's a buzz in Brazil, but they don't know what really means that. They don't, sometimes they don't understand that maybe maker movement can be a bridge for something beyond, as I said, social emotional learnings. So we try to bring more the, the professors and the other directors and owners to understand more about that. And after that, we need to get some feeling with the directors, how can we adapt our content and how can we adapt their content to our content. So with this first phase done, we go to a second phase that we call Welcome Maker Space, where we provide some, some, some tutorials, we provide some manuals, how to build a basic maker space. But they can adapt as they want, right? So they can do what they, they, they for it to become team, become with some subject. For example, this school, they can work more with sustainable projects. The other school, they work more with technological problems. So they, they can adapt the atmospheres around the classes that are gonna, that are going through all the classes after that in these schools. So first one, I said, more understand what the content. The second one, make, make a space welcome. The third one, we start to f help the school to find some facilitator. We have realized that facilitator have been a huge, uh, a uh, challenge for us because of the most of the time people that come from robotics is just just the class of robots that we had in Brazil they don't have the mindset to think differently and uh, and try to understand how can I engage social emotional learning to this to the students but it helped the schools to find someone that can have the right profile to achieve this function in the maker space and, it, and it, the last phase so there are four phase we help the school to show to to the parents, what everything of every, all these means, because it's so so much like it's very new in Brazil. How, why that is important? Because if the parents don't see importance on this, in the future we are not going to have anymore. So I think the scale thing, as you said, what has really helped us is put in some 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 squares, some areas. But after that, the school can adapt as they want. So it's just a start, and we we stay like as a support to make what they want. Mm -hmm. yeah. Nice. We have more time if you have some questions for this super guy. So we have here one. All right, so I have a comment and a question. Um, the comment is about the, um, the mindset of a makerspace, which really, really speaks to me, you know? Like, I feel like here uh, we have uh, this kind of mindset. Because like, 
I mean, the other mindset, the traditional schooling would be like, I would, you know, like, so everybody, you have to take a test now. And, and if you fail it, uh, you have to rewatch the talk. You know, like, how do you feel when I tell you that? And then for some reason, we think it's okay if we tell that to younger people, right? They feel exactly the same way as we do when we get told stuff like that. And um, so there is, um, I'm really glad to see your talk here, and there is a, like a larger community in the world that um, they, they do self-directed learning, which is the key word, or democratic education. Uh, I myself work at a school like that here in Berlin, if anybody's interested. Um, there are environments um, all over the world where um, you can like, direct your own learning, where you are in charge. Nobody will tell you, okay, now it's math time, sit down, do math. No, you cannot go to the toilet. You do math now, you know. Um, so yeah, that's, that really speaks to me. All right, and one more thing I wanted to comment is, um, do you know about agile learning centers? Have you heard of that? Which is really, a really nice keyword. I don't know one in, there's none in Germany yet, but I visited one in uh, New York City, agile learning centers. Org. So that's a really cool thing to check out, also with the same mindset. Um, now my question, so I'm, I'm curious as to how, I feel like we, it's not legitimized enough yet. Like this makerspace mindset, I feel like the majority, when they think about education, they think, uh, so yeah, that's a nice thing to have on the side and it looks good on pictures, but that's not actually education, you know. That's just something on the side. But I feel like that this is actually the center. This is actually future-proof education. And I'm wondering, how can we push this forward? How can we convince parents, uh, headmasters, officials, politicians, the general public? How can we convince them that this is legitimate, future-proof education? Um, super good. I think I, think I, can, I can learn that because like, I'm like, in the school every day. Like, I am the make, uh, like apart from the makerspace manager, I'm the makerspace teacher, just as the history teacher is the history teacher, and just as the math teacher is the math teacher. So just like any other subject in the school, we have rubrics with learning goals that we set, and those learning goals are um, those, those learning goals are built from standards. So we have standard bodies. We use both international standards and the national, the Brazilian-based curriculum as a standard. Um, and we have assessments, which like, by itself is a, is a food for thought and like theme for a whole talk. Um, but I think we, um, so as I said, like we are going back into the system and we have like to play a little bit of the system's uh, rules. So we have all that we, you would expect from um, from a regular subject in any school. Like, I mean, that's the way um, I implement it. Uh, Miguel probably has like different cases within schools. So for some schools, it's something with a less like formal pedagogical approach. It's more like uh, goes more towards free time. But uh, like, I like I like to sit in the middle. So like, even even if I have like. Uh, rubrics and like all the formal planning as any subject. Um, I have like this first grade student uh, once like she was like running around the classroom like terrible and I got her and to talk to her hey um, you, you cannot do this here you're not expected to do this here because of this and this and that and so like in my classroom I cannot accept this and then she's like is this a classroom? Because I thought, I thought it was the playground and I was like no no it's a, yeah, well, well <laughs> It is also a place where you can play. So like the, the students, they, they are trying to realize what this is. So, um, so really, this is not totally legitimized. This is very uh, experimental in many senses. Uh, and in other senses, it, it is grounded on uh, pedagogical principles and theories and concepts and whatnot. Yes, it's important to, to say that the, the schools and, uh, and the work of Rodrigo and, and Miguel is in private schools. So we are still trying to understand how to reach a public education in Brazil with this mindset and everything. But it's a step by step, but that's it. Yeah, and, and I think like if we don't change the metrics and the way that we are measuring success and all these things in society, it's kind of hard to change it like deeply because uh, when you 
like to get an, in an university, you need like some stamps, some layers, you need to pass an, a specific exam. And when you are looking for a job, mostly of the headhunters or the companies or the people who are like looking for you, um, they are like looking your curriculum, looking for some stamps or some specifically universities or things that you did in the past. So if you still have this kind of society that is looking to you, expecting some like formal institutions and some like things that comes with, with one specific, specifically mindset, it's kind of hard to convince that the school should change and should be a different place because in the end of the day, the parents are like, okay, it's nice, it's great, but the society that we are living in and I need to prepare my kids for to work and to, you know, to get in the university and whatever because that is like the society. So, and it's kind of... It's hard to change this mindset and to experiment if you don't change in the other side. For example, uh, in Brazil, it's super strictly like the public policy around education, what exactly you have to have to be considered a school, or how can you prove that you are uh, teaching someone with these specific competences and abilities and everything. And if you have everything that, if this box is so close, it's hard to convince that a makerspace is the school like the one that we are envisioning in the future. Uh, so for me, like, it's important to generate all these examples because then you can prove and show and interview the kids, the parents, everyone around to say, oh, that works. People are learning a lot of things in a different method. But at the same time, you have to connect with like uh, the policymakers and all the big institutions uh, to explain why we should make policies and everything different otherwise we are not going to change the public systems which is like basically designed for most of the people so i don't know i think it's like both sides do you know if you combine it we can su succeed and go faster so this is i think is important to share knowledge and be connected to the initiatives because then we have examples and then, of course, we have to track and measure uh, what exactly these kind of kids are learning and what exactly they are prepared for. So do, it's like it's important to get in the university for what? Or uh, they are going to, I don't know, end up doing a different kind of model of society and in which way. So if you don't like question, make these questions and we don't like try to measure in some way and it can be in a more open way. It's kind of hard to prove and then it looks like just the side project or something that is full. It's, it's funny and nice, but it's not like that official, so. Yeah, I just want to add one thing. For me, the real world has pushed that. So I have a lot of stories of parents that came, hey, in your curriculum, you are going to teach kind of a business model canvas for my students in the high school. Yeah, he, he doesn't have like the entire and deeper, but he can have a sense of that. Hey, in your curriculum, you're going to learn how to talk to people, how to listen particularly. Yeah, he is going to do that. So as parents have been pushing that, that in the normal world, in their careers, they see that as important for their children too, for their students too. So, so we, have, we have collected a lot of stories about that on this way. So for me, it's, a, it's, a, like, it's kind of a time. It's getting, it's getting. We, we, we can always like make more fingers inside of the schools, but for me it's already some river that's ongoing and we cannot come back. Uh, last questions to, to, to answer quickly. Because um, you just said, you know, that there are many uh, teachers and so are, are interested in your work. And um, do you have uh, some training for trainers or, or do you have experience with educating teachers in this field of making? Yeah. So we have a lot of these experiences. So, but we're still learning a lot how was the right profile and it was the right way to teach then. Currently, we have a, a platform on the internet that try to at least give the basic skills so they can learn inside of the space. Uh, but we always need someone to be in touch with that one. We always need someone to be inside of the school, helping them how to use the tools. What we learned that people that come from the technology area is so much harder to get the, uh, than people that doesn't come from a technology area, but we teach this one 
in technical skills. Because what is important is how you deal with the children where the activity is happening. For example, when, if he's building something, we say that we never, answer, we never should answer what to do when he is asking something. But always make against questions, say what's the best way to make that? Let's think together. Right? So when you think a lot about the tool, we cannot get that sense. Because I always think that the tool can help you. So we are still learning. We don't have like the right profile, but we're getting that. Last words? Um, no, I, was, I would like just to add some comments about the previous one because what I see is like, of course, all the school systems changing because the society is changing and there are a lot of pressure for like the schools uh, teach different abilities and social emotions and there are, there are like a huge topic around it. And of course that everyone understood that the future is super technologic so of course that we need people prepared to that so we need like robotics and we need computers we need everything so mostly of the people connect to education are like trying to put that on the curriculum and everything but at the same side uh, what we are seeing in Brazil and some countries in Latin America, I don't know if it's happening in Germany, but it's like it's good to let us let you know. It's like people are thinking that philosophy, arts, and a lot of um, humanities are totally uh, usefulless. So they are kind of, that are like a law at the moment, that they are kind of thinking that these kind of things should not be teached anymore. So... The thing about makerspace that can be tricky is uh, it can be something that put, put, people, put people just in the technical skills and looks like something creative and fun because the picture is much more funny than the traditional schools. But doesn't mean that you are like uh, exploring the critical thinking and putting like the questions of the society and all this idea that we should make people thinking in the first in the first thing do you know as the first thing and the tools and everything it can be after so for me it's like I'm I'm pretty much sure that it Entrepreneurship and the tech skills are super like um, every, it's, it's, it's embedding in all the mentality and of course that we will see the school of the future will be like super tech and probably more explorative and learning and with learning by doing process but I'm not that sure that all this mindset of collaboration of critical think and all these abilities that we need for the society is included in this vision for everyone and then it's like it's always about a fight between different ways to look at the society and about which society we want to build it so in in the end of the day, we end up with the same questions that we have since like we start humanity. That is like, which kind of future do, are you envisioning and for what and for who, do you know? And who is behind and, and who we want to include. So, yeah, it's just like a final, <laughs> a final thought because I think it's important to think when we are talking about the schools. Yeah, um, I, I have like two, two reflections I want to share. I think one piggies back on, on your question and like how to like legitimize this and, and then like thinking about metrics and like how we should think about metrics. But I, like I've been trying to uh, like put some like early results and like trying to see what's happening. And like, I mean, this is a very recent experience. The, the school was founded last year. So we're starting our second year now. Um, in Brazil, school starts in the school year starts in February, so like we're about half a year now. Um, and I have a classroom with like two thirds of the classroom are students that were uh, with us since last year, and one third is uh, with us since this year. Uh, so like they didn't they didn't have like a previous uh, maker culture or whatever, and. We had this uh, activity, uh, well the activity was they had to like look at a circuit diagram uh, on a breadboard. If you don't know what a breadboard is, like think about uh, Lego bricks and you can do that with electronic components, like can put them together and take it apart, uh, modify quite easily without soldering. Uh, so we had this activity and the students had to like look at the diagram, um, 
put it together with the actual components. So like they had to go and shop for the components, recognize them from the pictures, and uh, then write a text descri describing the circuit so that somebody else could like put it back together without looking at the diagram. So like the learning goal actually was that students like could look at a diagram and like uh, materialize it and then like describe with their language in English what's like what's written in another like in a different language. Um, so the the founding students like the students that were with, with the school since last year, uh, their performance was like oh, three out of twenty students did not perform well, and within the new students. Um, four out of seven students did not perform well. And the content, like, oh, I've never heard about breadboard or cir circuit elements, that was new for everybody. So somehow what, like the experiences that they had last year, they contributed to like a different approach to a problem that they faced and like, so it was completely new, like they were playing the same game, like relating to the content and but the skills that they built, the social, social emotional skills and the soft skills that they built were very important for their performance. Um, one more uh, reflection uh, and that uh, talks a lot about the school and like discipline and the school environment. So last year I had uh, like it was or last week and I had prepared like special activities for the students. Um, I was saying goodbye because I was going to teach a different division this year. Um, so like I had a whole week of special activities that I had planned very carefully. And then like the last day, the very last lesson, I had like a third grade class which was my biggest challenge throughout the year. And I just looked at them and said, you know guys, this is the last day, like last, last hour of school this year. Just do whatever you want. Work on whatever projects you want. And that was by far the most productive lesson with that class. They created amazing projects. Like one guy created, one girl created um, like a pencil case uh, that was shaped like a bunny because she likes bunnies. One, one boy created, um, I don't know, a disc game uh, and he built an arena with hot glue gun and other tools that he learned how to use. So like that really made me reflect about my everyday practice as an educator. And so I think that that's, that's what the maker movement is making the school in general, like rethink itself. Okay. Just like a few words. Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> so sorry, Gio. Uh, I just want to follow in something that Gabi and Rodrigo brought about the mindset, I like about the empathy, the attitude of these students. Uh, I want to just share why I work on this. So why I'm doing this stuff, why my life is involved in this right now. So one thing that really got me sometimes really sad, I think you guys have heard a lot about Brazil and other stuff. I'm not going to discuss here what's through or what's not through in, in the other country, but I hope that in the future, we can have children that be you become adults. When they face the problems as we have faced in Brazil, we just don't leave the country. We, we stay in the country and try, hey, could you, how could you think in this crisis as an opportunity to make better? And I have a lot of friends that just think, hey, I'm gonna leave because, you know, I'm not, he's not good, it's easier to think like that. And wait, so, you know, so I hope these children can think differently in the future if you could help then through technology to change the mindset. Yeah, thanks. Thank you very much, guys, thank you.